Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we've got a LEGO Overwatch set to review for you. This was sent to us from the LEGO group, so thanks a lot guys for bringing this set on over to us. This is the Dorado Showdown. It is set number 75972. It has 419 pieces, sells for $29.99 across the board. That would be US dollars, pounds, and euro, at least the last time I checked on Brick Set. And yeah, look at this. This is a... First of all, it's a, it's a lot of good pieces for the price. Uh, we get three, I think, very popular characters from Overwatch, not gonna lie. I'm not like some expert on Overwatch, but we do get, uh, we get Soldier 76, we get Reaper and McCree. So pretty awesome. Let's jump into the figs first. So McCree is up first. He's uh, looking pretty solid. I, I chose him to show off first because I think he's actually the best looking fig out of all three or maybe he's just my favorite character out of the three chosen here but really i do think the detailing is pretty spot on you can't see it totally unless i take this off and now this character feels a bit less traditional wild west and you can see his armor his sort of futuristic or sci-fi armor underneath uh underneath both sides that's gold reflective printing if you can see it there yeah it's a bit of bit reflective if you See it turning from either side. This is his face print. He also comes with a alternate hair piece, but all around he's a pretty good looking guy. I like this cape here. This is actually soft cloth, which is nice, or his shoulder piece. It's kind of uh, draped around the side. Looks very Clint Eastwood. And yeah, let's jump on to Reaper. So here is Reaper. All in all, the detailing for him works really well. Um, I think the main sore thumb or the main thing that really sticks out is of course the large size of his weapons they're really really big they're almost i mean they're probably up to his shoulder if you were to stand him up next to the character which is uh, i think just crazy but of course they wanted the weapons of these characters to be very distinctive because that is of course a major play feature let's take off uh, some of the extra bits and now here he is kind of just the figure alone really great printing on the front i like it a lot the back is pretty simple, though you can actually see quite a bit of armor detailing and things like that. He doesn't really need printing on the legs, which I think makes sense. This is actually the uh, cloth piece, so it gives a, you the little bit of the shoulder bits that kind of uh, pop out on either side. It's a little different from your standard cape. It's not soft cloth. This is one of those stiffer ones. And yeah, of course he comes with a hood piece. Now when it comes to the last fig of the set, we've got an insanely oversized weapon. This is Soldier 76. Generally speaking, I actually do like the detailing and build style that we got for the gun here. But at a certain point, you just have to ask yourself how much you want the details to pop through and how crazy big uh, the weapon uh, is you want it to be. Because really at the end of the day, uh, you can only have him holding it forward if he's studded into the ground somewhere, and there really isn't a lot on this set to stud in. I will show you in a minute. But um, ultimately, here he is. Let me take the gun out, and you can actually see the detailing on his chest. He's a bit simplified, too. I feel like there could have probably been leg printing for this guy. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, there's Soldier 76. 76 on the back. Does he have an alternate print? No, he doesn't, but this is actually a pretty good face print all in all. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting there with that nice wavy white hair piece. I would say he's probably my least favorite fig just because uh, of the gun. But uh, anyways, yeah, let's jump into the set itself. Now, by far my favorite piece of this set is the payload truck. Uh, it's just got such a fun look to it. It kind of reminds me actually of maybe the fifth element where you had that hovering, um, that old fishing boat that could hover. This is kind of the same concept where it is an old 1940s, 1950s style uh, pickup truck, but it's been outfitted with hover technology. Uh, it rolls around really, really smooth. This is uh, probably one of the more fun vehicles to actually roll around because it's got the train wheels along the bottom, the old school traditional train wheels, which is fun. Uh, it, make, it makes them very minimal. You can't really see them very well, so it does look like this thing can hover. And it slides around easily, at least on smooth surfaces like this one. So that actually can kind of also mimic the play feature of a hovering vehicle. It's so much fun, actually. It can just really roll around. It feels super, super smooth, so that's great. Um, of course, 
There is enough space to fit a single minifigure on the inside. There isn't much in terms of an interior, just uh, enough space for a seat, a steering wheel, and lots of arm room, but not enough for two figs, at least not comfortably. Um, so there it is, that's really easy. It just fits on with two studs there. And then this is the payload part of the payload truck. So it's a great little build actually, I like it, just the headlight pieces, these one by fours with the two studs on the sides. Yeah, it's fun. It fits in with uh, just a single jumper piece there, and that's that. Of course, you can fit your figures onto the back. Um, you know, you've got Reaper with his, uh, his like heavy shotguns and, and then uh, the Peacekeeper. So, I don't know. It looks pretty good. I, I, I think this is a, just a good vehicle, just in terms of play feature, uh, just because it's so much fun to move around. But outside of that, there aren't actually a ton of play features, play features uh, for this build. So let's move on to the, uh, to the map. I so I guess you could call it that. In essence, what we really have is just a bit of the play environment from this particular map that we play on. Uh, and it's fine. It's definitely good for just sort of a bit of a, a background detailing, but I am kind of surprised they didn't actually add any play features really. I mean, you can knock these things over. There's no, there's no like pop out function for this. This is on just a, a little jointed piece. You've got some fruit on the inside of the little uh, stand there. And this is kind of a fun color for this pole piece. We have a little bull. Yeah, it looks like a little bull. Sorry, that's most likely a reference to something from the game. So apologies once again, uh, if you guys are like super big Overwatch fans and you know exactly what it is. In fact, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, let me show you guys closer what that little thing is. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a bull, a creature. My mistake if I don't know. But anyways, there's a candle in the windowsill. It's, it's a nice little front side of the vignette. Uh, you can't even call it a vignette. And then this is what it looks like from the back. Not really meant to be showing anything. It looks like, yeah, you can open up the windows. So you can open up the blinds there, probably pose guys, uh, have them shooting out the windows is my guess. And uh, yeah, so that is actually it for pretty much the whole set. This, this one feels a little bit more like you really want to get the minifigs uh, and the actual vehicle is fun. I do like the vehicle. Uh, I think they did a good job on the figs. It is kind of funny. Um, this is the first Overwatch set that I've actually gone through really in closer detail. So this is um, the first taste, I guess, that I'm getting of uh, these large oversized weapons, which I have to say right off the bat, not really a fan of because they, they're just so wonky. They look so weird and kind of funny in the hands of the characters, but the prints for the figs are good. This is nice. Um, I still think the part to price ratio is pretty good, but I am a little bit surprised that they did not include any play functions. Not like I miss them so much. I don't really play around with sets as much nowadays, but um, I just felt like because this is based on Overwatch, they would have, uh, I think, more interactive features included. But anyways, that's my opinion, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little review. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey everybody, just wanted to pop in very quickly, let you guys know that we've got a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some incredibly awesome Lego mocks. I highly recommend you guys go check it out if you're interested in building something uh, a little bit more high quality, uh, way more detailed, and the revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel, as well as the designers that build these awesome Lego creations. So anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.